Inside Gaming is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Defend yourself against DDoS attacks at expressvpn.com slash inside. Hey everybody and welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Thursday. It's throw it in the trash, dude. Oh, f I f up. And uh, Amir, cut this out. Great. It's throw that dude in the trash Thursday. A personal favorite of ours here me. Oh my god, what's happening? This is the one. It's Throw This Dude in the Trash Thursday, a personal favorite of ours here at this old fake journalism show. Throw the dice, spin the wheel, take a chance on the baby, I'm a real big deal. Yay, we're doing it. Finally. Speaking of us and our fake journalism, breaking news. <laughs> Everyone is really pissed off at a good friend of the show, Randy Pitchford, the CEO of Gearbox. We love him here. Did he make everyone sit through another card trick or something? Mm, no. Oh, surely he described his fondness for barely legal squirt porn in the weirdest way possible then. Mm, no, not this time. Uh, the magic trick this time was, uh, can I get a drum roll? That's it. He made his employees' money disappear. The greatest trick of all. Turns out if you interview for a job at Gearbox and they promise you a big bonus at some indeterminate date in the future, uh, probably keep looking. Probably don't do that. Cool way to treat Autumn, people. what's happening? So guys, yeah, this all popped off yesterday after Kotaku published a piece about Gearbox's questionable practices, to put it very mildly, when it came to making Borderlands 3. According to that story by Jason Schreier, another good friend of the show, but not sarcastically this time, Pitchford met with his employees a few days ago and told them that their bonuses would not be as big as they expected not even close. Yeah, this is a big deal apparently because Gearbox, according to the articles, pays its people below average salaries by industry standards. Cool, good. But to make up for that, they offer them a cut of the royalties once a game ships. And in the case of a big hit game like Borderlands 2, those bonuses were enough for some employees to buy houses with. So we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars here. Wow, this is the house that Borderlands built. Yeah, just for some context, Gearbox is based in Frisco, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas. The median home value there is over 400,000 bucks. Oh, I had a fun oh night in Frisco once. I got drunk, but also their serving dish was a big silver cowboy hat and the divot had the salsa. You butt chugged? No, I didn't butt chug. <laughs> Whoa. Not in Frisco at least. You butt chugged in Frisco, no, Texas? that was in White Sands, New Mexico. In a house bought by Gearbox bonus money? So some employees told Kotaku that management had in fact straight up promised them six figure bonuses, which is, dude, I would plan my entire year <laughs> around that. So we're talking a lot of money here. Uh, but when Pitchford met with employees this week, he told them they'd be getting much smaller checks, which is nothing close to what they expected. Oopsie. He said the game had been way more expensive to make than they'd planned and that Gearbox had grown too. Oh, opening up a new studio in Quebec. And here's the real kicker. Employees told Kotaki that Pitchford said if they didn't like it, they were free to quit. Cool, that's a cool response. Oh, hopefully that $12 million bonus he gave himself is still okay. He's butt chugging money. In response to Kotaki's story, Gearbox said in a statement that our studio is talent led and we believe strongly in everyone sharing in profitability. They also said that Gearbox has the most generous royalty bonus system in AAA, adding that since this program began, Gearbox talent has earned over $100 million in royalty bonuses above and beyond traditional compensation. Gearbox though also seem to allude to the costs of Borderlands 3, saying it was the largest investment ever made by the company into a single video game. They added that employees have, quote, now earned their first royalty bonus on that profit. Additionally, a forecast update was given to the talent at Gearbox that participates in the royalty bonus to set expectations for the coming quarters. And okay. that sounds like that's all they're getting is, is quarters. Throw the dice, spin the wheel, take a chance on the- Eight quarters, got Rhode Island. Got South Dakota. Do you have a map that you could show us? Maybe you could pull up. <laughs> I can't, cause Jimmy's in the way. Oh, <laughs> this mother. <laughs> Throw the dice, spin the That's enough. I'm on some <laughs> today. They also reminded us that they're privately owned, so they don't have to really say anything if they don't want to. But they said we do practice transparency within our own family. You don't turn your back on family. Transparency, <laughs> like if you don't like it, take a walk. There's that F word. Oh no. Oh, family. Sorry, I was like, what? Where was the cuss the word? Yeah, the, the most important thing in life will always be family. Family. <laughs> yeah, all right. So here's the question, which is how much money did Borderlands 3 actually make? We don't know for sure because Gearbox is private, as they stated earlier, and we don't know the development costs involved. Kotaku claimed it was around 95 million, and if you add in all the DLC, they said it was closer to 140 million. So that's a lot of money. There's also no doubt that Borderlands was a hit. By the end of last year, Gearbox parent company, Take-Two, Interactive said it sold nearly 8 million copies. And on top of all that, it got all that sweet Epic Game Store exclusivity money. So they definitely cashed in hard on this one. That would seem to indicate that it made back its money and then some, but only Gearbox knows for sure. It's also worth noting the game was discounted pretty quickly after its release.
release, so Gearbox did make it sound like the game had only recently become profitable, and from the sound of their statement, they made it seem like more bonuses would be coming in the future. But given Gearbox's recent history of promises, we can't fault the employees for not believing them. We'll dive into this tale of late stage capitalism in a moment, but first, you know what you can believe in? Some quality wireless earbuds from Raycon. <laughs> Hey everybody, I invite you to take a look around you. It's a wireless world, right? And everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds. But before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out the wireless earbuds from Raycon. So you already know Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, and that they sound just as amazing as top audio brands you already know. Their newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are their best ones yet, with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolation isolating fit, which is very annoying usually with other stuff when noise leaks in through the space in the air. These don't do that, so it's very nice. Raycon's wireless earbuds are so comfortable, they're perfect for on-the-go listening and for taking phone calls. I have really small ear canals, so normally wireless earbuds like irritate my canals and I can't wear them for a long time. Raycon's always fit really comfortably and they're very snug in just the right amount of way. And yeah, I like them a lot. So unlike some of your other wireless options, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet with no dangling wires or stems. And you've heard us talk before about how the company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg, our boy, Cardi B, we love her. Uh, yeah, everyone, they're all obsessed with Raycon. So that's pretty cool. You can pick up a pair and see what the hype is all about. Now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. You can get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com inside. That's buyraycon.com inside for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds by Raycon.com slash inside. Thank you very much Raycon for sponsoring today's episode and thank you guys for supporting our sponsors. So to sum this all up, even by the standards of modern game development, which are exploitative to say the least, this Gearbox situation stood out as being particularly gross. Game development is an extremely brutal process with employees working long hours. In Gearbox's case, they were working those hours and getting paid less than their counterparts in other studios. Yeah, but they had a carrot in front of them the whole time, a big payday at the end until it was yanked away. So yeah, yeah, Corey Barlog, the director of God of War, slammed Gearbox in a tweet, which he later deleted, saying this is a shitty thing to do to the actual people responsible for the things you make. Another staffer at Sony Santa Monica, technical animator Dan Lowe, also weighed in, saying some advice for new devs. Ignore bonuses or any other discretionary payments when assessing companies or negotiating your contract. Focus on salary. Let bonuses be a nice surprise when you get them, rather than a disappointment when you don't. I mean, that's that's good advice, but it also like kind of doesn't take into account the predatory tactics used by management to make it sound like a done deal to get you to work for less. And Pitchford himself started trending on Twitter yesterday as angry fans lashed out at him. Twitter user Toilet Wine Connoisseur wrote that, Randy Pitchford is a capitalist. Exploiting their workers and stealing every cent they can from them is by design what they do. Another person on Twitter, Cradle of Sloth, summed it up by saying, Randy Pitchford demonstrates perfectly how someone does not get rich by hard work. You get your developers to create a billion dollar franchise and pay them a pittance with the promise of bonuses, then yank the care on a stick bonus away from them while boasting record sales. Of course, Pitchford has always been a controversial figure in video games. While Gearbox has made some great games like the Borderlands franchise and some bad ones like Aliens Colonial Marines, Pitchford himself has a colorful history to say the least. He seems to think of himself as a fancy dressing magician, but a lawsuit brought out some disturbing allegations about him. Yeah, that whole saga started a few years ago when Gearbox sued Wade Callender, who was the developer's lawyer from 2010 to 2018. Gearbox accused Callender of fraud and breach of fiduciary duty. According to the suit, Gearbox said he borrowed $300,000 from Gearbox for a home loan that he did not repay. It also claimed that he misused a company credit card for personal expenses. Whoopsie! So yeah, not to be outdone, Calendar turned around and sued Gearbox, and that's when things got real dark real fast. Calendar sued called Pitchford a manipulative and morally bankrupt CEO. Awesome. And also accused Pitchford of getting a secret $12 million bonus from its publisher that was allegedly an advance against profits from Borderlands games. At the time, Calendar and his lawyers argued that Pitchford struck a deal in 2016 to get a personal, secretive, executive bonus of $12 million to be paid directly to a Pitchford entity called Pitchford Entertainment Media Magic LLC, or PEMM. Calendar argued that Pitchford was taking an advance on royalties that would have otherwise gone to the staff at Gearbox. Their lawsuit called it tragic exploitation, where millions are being siphoned to Randy Pitchford's personal accounts instead of funding the development of Borderlands. Ugh. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? In light of 
recent events. Oh, oh, we talking we talking those recent events? Yeah, they get worse. Uh, the lawsuit also claimed that Pitchford once left a USB drive in a restaurant that had underage porn on it. Wait, didn't he leave it in like a medieval times <laughs> restaurant? That's right. So yeah, That's yikes. Right. For his part, Pitchford strongly denied those charges. We had last year that he was shocked by what he called Calendar's lies, adding that he's simply trying to shake me down for money. Late last year, a court threw out the lawsuit against Pitchford and Gearbox and said that evidence in the case exonerated CEO Randy Pitchford of the allegations. It also said that all misunderstandings between both sides had been resolved. Oh, hold on, I'm getting a call. Hey Autumn, it is I, Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford. Can I please have my USB drive back? I have nothing to do in quarantine. Women hang squirting. up, hang up! Created CEO Randy Pitchford of the allegations. It also said all misunderstandings between both sides have been resolved. It's interesting that the court can decide that. They're no longer mad at each other and we've said it. It's, now, like, a, it's like a parent separating their kids. Yeah. Kiss. Oh, parent. Okay. <laughs> now both of you squirt. Oof. Good God. At the same time? I made it weird. I'm sorry. 